Welcome back to Let's Get Techie. This week we're upgrading my personal rig from an RTX 3080 for the Win 3 Ultra to the same card but in 3090 trim. We'll also be installing an EVGA hybrid cooler on the card as I purchased it with it fully disassembled. The card came with the cooler literally in pieces. For whatever reason, the previous owner before the friend I purchased the card from had removed even the fans and shroud from the heatsink. My friend that had it prior to me never had a reason to put it all back together since he was running it with a full cover water block. So today you'll get a montage of the upgrade and then we'll discuss whether the 500 watt VBIOS for this card is worthwhile or not. I've run some of the benchmarks to find out and we'll cover that at the end of the video. Without further ado, let's dive into the upgrade. Moving on to the benchmarks, I started at completely stock other than a custom fan curve. I always use a custom fan curve on every video card because manufacturers like to tune their fans for noise optimization. Personally, I'm always either using headphones or a VR headset, so I don't mind if my computer sounds like a jet taking off. As you can see, I slowly stepped my way up from stock to an eventual score of 13,481 in Superposition 1080p Extreme. I then saw two subsequent runs where the score regressed. At this point, it was time to try the 500 watt VBIOS. Upon upping the power to 119%, which should give the full fat 500 watts, I saw a slight increase in what I was able to OC to and a slight increase in score. Unfortunately, I still was unable to take full advantage of the 500 watt VBIOS. At this point, I figured even though technically speaking, the 1080p Extreme benchmark is more taxing than 4K Optimized, I would give 4K Optimized a try to see if I could use up that available 500 watt power budget. It did use more power, a total of 473 watts, but no matter how hard I tried, I never saw a peak of 500 watts. Keep in mind, during all of this testing, I was using GPU-Z to show what my limiting factor was, and it was showing power the entire time. This means even though the card wasn't fully utilizing the 500 watts available, according to GPU-Z, it was still asking for more power. Finally, I decided to bust out the Port Royal benchmark. I figured since it includes ray tracing, this might be my best shot to actually use up the full 500 watt power budget. Unfortunately, I was wrong, and I actually observed a power regression to 467 watts peak. Again, this is while GPU-Z is telling me the card wants more power. 
So to wrap things up, my takeaway on this is that unless you're using some type of exotic cooling, the 500 watt V-BIOS is probably not worth it. Even then, it still probably isn't worthwhile because you would likely want to step up to something that allowed for an even higher power budget than 500 watts. And that's going to do it for this one. Let us know down in the comments if you have an EVGA 3090 and are actually able to take full advantage of the 500 watt V-BIOS. We're curious what others have experienced. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Make sure to get subscribed if you aren't already and hit the bell icon so you're notified when our next video goes live. We appreciate you watching and we will see you in the next one.